All right, we're coming off a big victory, 23-point victory over the hated UGA Bulldogs, former team of our psycho in on our team that we love and unleash on any team we want, KD Johnson. Uh, man, that was a big one. We wanted to get some housekeeping out of the way to begin the podcast. We had some great podcasts earlier this week. We've had a, quite a role in getting interviews. Uh, the first one was Pablo Escobarner. Uh, the director of shenanigans on Auburn Twitter for men's basketball. We are into the memes now. We have a Twitter account. We're posting memes. We're hating on Jason Newell or whatever his name is. The vote is number nine, the AP poll. We're posting the memes. We're into it. Uh, the second podcast we had was with director of communications for the actual Auburn men's basketball team, Marlene Navor. She was great. Some a lot of good inside nuggets on the team. If you want to hear some background info on what's going on, team personality, how the information on Auburn gets out there, check it out. Both those interviews you know, are good anytime. You can listen to them next week, three weeks from now. You can go back in time and listen to them if you want to. Uh, another big one we wanted to talk about was reviews. We put out there that we need some reviews and started, and you guys delivered. <laughs> we, we actually noticed that before we even put that out there in the Ole Miss game, there was a ton of them. We had no idea. We had forgotten to check. We hadn't had a review in so long. And we said, oh, man. We just didn't think about it. I looked into it after the old Miss game because we put it out there in the podcast that we need some more. Oh, y'all had already beat us too. There's five or six of them in there, including a hilarious one, a bunch more since then. I'll go ahead and read one off here. That was my favorite. The title is, it's from a guy named Jankery. And the title is Blatant F Word, Not Marked Explicit. And I, ugh, yes. He said, hello. Well, I enjoyed the beautiful balance of fact and opinion. I expected this podcast to be about Auburn men's basketball podcast, at least during basketball season. Who knows what lies ahead for y'all? While I enjoyed the listen, I clearly heard the word foot bleep and was taken aback. I understand that there are exceptions, but an explicit warning would have been appropriate. Truly great coverage only Auburn Lumps can provide. Love to hear what you think about the players as well as the high level insight regarding the team stats. Keep up the great work, War Eagle. I very much agree. We're sorry we didn't mark explicit. I know your children might have heard about this other sport that starts with an F, and we're very sorry about that just impressed that one other person out there loved your shtick on this this is that was awesome i'm glad yeah, I, I i threw it to you here expected an apology to mr jankery here i His do apologize children you've slipped up too though we, we've both failed a couple times but we're we're good we're we're, we're in good a good now we're gonna get a bleep button so we can we can hit the bleep button just in case you know yeah. but thanks for the review guys uh, there's a bunch more we'll do shout outs at the end for a couple of that some twitter stuff so tune in at the end of it uh, we'll get into the game now. A uh, big one, you know, I, I texted Matt this, that uh, we're not, we haven't been in this position very often as a fan base that we can have a team come in. Sure, we can be favored in tons of games, but have this high of a ranking, which we'll talk about the AP, I think, too, at the end of the podcast, but to come in with a 22-point uh, favoring or whatever you call it by Vegas and to have to cover that and basically think to ourselves, like, how can we even have fun this game? We have to basically beat a team in the SEC by 20 plus points to even have fun. It feels like, well, we had a fun time. <laughs> we need to change our perspective some on that. Or at least if you were thinking that way, I tried to re like meditate in that any victory is a good victory and all that, but we just dominated from start to finish. We had a great time. Like the monsters out there, Matt thoughts, MVP. And we ended up up 25 at halftime. So we'll get into the pregame notes. I mean, it's pretty much exactly what we wanted to see in the first half. Um, Auburn was clearly a motivated basketball team. All the issues that were present in the first half of the Ole Miss game defensively disappeared. Uh, they, they just brought the energy. I thought this was maybe the most impressive constant display of just pushing the tempo and playing fast and playing the Bruce Pearl way. I think part of that was the number two ranking. And part of that, it's Georgia. And Bruce gets that this is a very important game for his recruiting base and for everything else. MVP. People like that we start with MVP. So back to it. A um, couple candidates we'll throw out. I have a pretty strong opinion about who I would pick. Um, let's see. We've got, where's Walker? Walker led the team in scoring with 15.6 rebounds, five or six blocks. Just another tremendous game from him. So he's, he's on the list. Jalen Williams off the bench, 13 points, five rebounds in only 16 minutes. Like wow. extremely efficient for a very, very, very quiet. I did not realize he, he would even be in the conversation. Yeah. I know he played well, but. He, he had more um, more points than Jabari, more points than Wendell. I mean, 
Katie. We spread it out. We really spread it out on this one. It's hard. There's one, two, three, four, five, six players in double digits. That's crazy. I mean, I, that's that's awesome to see. Um, Wendell Green has to be on the list. A double double, twelve points, eleven assists. Just really controlled the action at a lot of points. Um, and I think those would be my three guys. You could put KD. He hit three threes in the first half and kind of. But I think that's more of a homecoming pick if you pick him. Um, so what are your, what are your thoughts? I've got mine, but you go ahead. I think it, I think it's more of a two-way race between Kessler and green. I think Kessler looked really dominant at times. I, I think in the second half, we tried to work it to him. Someone showed how dominant he could have been against this UGA team. They just could not match up against him or any of our larger guys. Really. That's part of the reason we dominated on the glass. And if he, if we could have worked it to him a couple more times, I could have named him MVP. If they could have counted that two, at the end of the half, which we'll have to talk about. I don't know they what did, happened though. there. They did count it. They, they, they were counting it. the two eventually? They did. At the end of the wow, I missed after that. Half them, after half. Wow, half okay. Half. Well, still, not enough. He had hit one of those three threes that he shot. I think I could have put it over there. But Wendell Green, just amazing in every aspect of the game in this one. He was running the circus in there. I was trying to think when there's this many players doing well and it's this much of a team effort, it's hard to choose a guy. So I started to think, who on this team, if you took them out, would the game be completely different? And sure, Kessler's like that blocks everything. But, man, Wendell was delivering the ball everywhere. He was finishing amazing drives. He was doing his usual threes. He just looks like the leader, like one of the leaders on this team that we we did not expect coming in that he could do this. And he's just so smooth now and under control. And I can't believe, even from out of conference to SEC play, Matt predicted that Jabari would score more points in SEC play than he did out of conference. Wendell, we need to check Wendell's uh, <laughs> scoring versus the dude because he has just turned it up another notch. And I just can't believe how easily and how like uh, creatively he drives the ball on these guys. Much bigger guys that we thought they couldn't do it against larger guys. And he's he's proving it every single game and looking better and better and getting tons of great national attention. Jabbar, and that, that's another great part about this team's playing so well. And Bruce has talked about this, that if the team plays well, it's going to be good for you. And it is paying off right now for the likes of Jabari and Kessler and Wendell and several other guys because the national spotlight is on us. And Jabari might have always gotten that. He would have been on the draft boards or whatever. But Kessler is getting a ton of love. And Wendell, man, he's probably the most, the best recipient of this like national love from guys that would have never paid attention to him. But now that they have to watch our games because we're so good, everyone's got Wendell. They're talking about Wendell and how amazing he is to watch. It's a great point. Uh, you get all the scouts at all these games. I mean, you know, I don't know if Wendell's going to be an NBA player. He may have some Jared Harper luck, but he, he if he's going to have a shot, whether it's overseas or anything, he's getting the best publicity from Eastern Kentucky to this Auburn team you could possibly get. He looks incredibly comfortable. I agree with everything you said. He To me, it's an easy call because he delivered about – eight or 10 of Kessler's points on perfect alley-oops. He, those two have a great connection um, running that high pick and roll. Uh, he is just, and I thought he really stepped up defensively. There were times where he looked like Zepp Jasper out there just hounding Georgia. I think they knew Georgia was just- Four steals. Little, four steals. Uh, he's always a pretty good rebounder for a guard. And 11 assists is hard to do in college basketball. He only played 26 minutes. Um, he was just- I think I texted you. He was dictating the flow of this game for five or 10 possessions in a row in the first half when Auburn really uh, stretched out the lead. So he's the clear MVP for me. Um, I continue to just be so impressed and amazed with how he comes off the bench. He's accepted that role. He's made the most of it. Uh, he's finishing all these games except for this one because it was such a blowout at the end. And uh, he is he is really becoming an engine that makes this offense go at in really important stretches of games. We, we can, uh, I think we can officially, if we go back to our very first podcast, which if you all go back, the sound quality is terrible, but it will be fun one day with how good this team is to go back. And I'm hoping this will kind of be a living document of the season at the end. If this team can do what we think they can, this will be worth going back to, but we window went off in that first game and we said he was a baller in that game. We're talking about assists or, anything like that. We were just talking about how the scoring was great. And we said, oh, we'll see if it's a fluke. We'll see if we look back on this podcast one day and say, oh, well, he went off in this game, but he's a whatever player. They said, nah, we can officially, we could have done it several games ago, probably, but I'm going to officially do it right now, a check mark. He is a baller. He is everything we thought we might could have in that first game 
and honestly more than we thought we could have in that first game because he's turned up the scoring that he already had and now he's assisting the ball like crazy and it's you see it in this game too that it's not another point guard could have enough kept the pace up in this kind of game they couldn't have delivered like he he, he got some creative moves in this one too behind the back stuff behind the the head pass and he could he was feeling himself for sure in this one I don't know if too many of like the more glitzy plays actually worked out but the attitude the swagger of it and Matt I think you brought this up a, a swagger of Samir Dowdy that kind of thing at least the senior year of Samir Dowdy it's yeah. almost beyond that he would just the game was almost slower to him it felt like in this game for Wendell and that is one of the best compliments you can make for a college basketball player yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think this whole team kind of smelled blood in the water coming into this game because of Georgia's struggles. And they they only play, what they play, eight guys tonight, really seven. Um, so they just didn't have the depth. They don't have the top end talent. And I think our guys were ready to put on a show. And yeah, Wendell, I mean, uh, shout out to AU Nerd on Twitter. I've never met you, but I've followed you for a long time and I love your takes. Um, he said it's the, you know, Wendell has the swagger of uh, Samir with the range of Jared in the body of Javon. And it, it, it ties together all these guards that Bruce has had that kind of had pieces of the puzzle. And it really feels like Wendell is, is elevating his play. I, I'm really excited. We'll talk more about Kentucky, but how does Wendell Green, uh, these smaller guards, that's the ultimate test of small guards playing against those lengthy NBA type guards that Kentucky has. Um, the hands of that. Anthony McLemore, the eyes of Horace Spencer, the toenails okay. of Dejo okay. Purifoy, the, the fingers <laughs> of Austin Duck. <laughs> it was he, he definitely doesn't have the Austin Wiley fingers. That's the one thing he doesn't have. We know that. Uh, I, I think there's a couple stats that tell the story of this game. It's just such a dominant game. One by 23 points and it never felt close. It never felt in jeopardy. Uh, two big ones we always look at is rebounds and turnovers. They had 18 turnovers. We had a, that's big, it was in Matt's pregame notes. Rebounds, we had 41, they had 31, you could really feel that. But the biggest one you'll see on here is we shot the ball 72 times to their 50. We didn't actually shoot that great of a percentage. We shot 27% from three and 45% from the field. 45% of this field is fine. I think you want to shoot 30 plus at least from three if you're going to have a big game. So to shoot 27% from three and still feel like we had a big three game, we shot 10 of them. Did we shoot 36 threes? Yeah, half our shots were threes, which that's wow. the weird part. And especially, like you said, they just really had no answer inside. If this had been a more competitive game from the get-go, I think that wouldn't have happened. But it kind of turned into a the second half. Circus. Honestly. It turned into a circus. We were yeah. just letting it go. And it, as long as you're winning like that, that's the most fun way you can win a game. If we had won this game still by 23 points and we had efficiently worked the ball down low and sort of, we still had a good time. We just let it go out there. We let it play street ball, baller, the very Bruce Pearl fast-paced offense. It's a lot of fun. Hey, I'm glad you brought that up. Like we talk about rebounds and turnovers so much. That's why you get a game where you're playing, you know, in this possession, possession, possession type game of basketball, you get 22 more shots than the other team. You're going to win every time. I mean, it's just, it's that obvious. And like you said, the team shot similar percentages. They actually shot a better percentage from three. 38% um, from three from UGA to Tar 27%. Yeah. You would never, if you didn't think about the stats much, you wouldn't think at all. You know, right. they shoot more. They hit five threes with that 38%. We hit 10 threes with our 27%. We just yeah. got to shoot it so much more. And the key, I mean, we've talked about, uh, but 16 offensive rebounds for Auburn. I mean, they just, they crashed the offensive glass. They use their athleticism. The bench continues to be 31 to nine bench points, 10 blocks again. Uh, you know, it's just, it, you please, I'm pinching myself too. Just don't take stuff that this team is doing for granted. Like it's nuts. Kessler going into tonight had more blocks than six SEC teams this year. Wow. And he's, he's been amazing. in foul trouble. We, we have to, we, we have two teams. things the podcast is trying to get done in real life at this point. I don't think one of these is going to happen, but the other one might. I really still want the B's for blocks up there. Like the, they do strikeouts in baseball with K's and they hang it up in the, the rafters. Can you imagine if during the broadcast when Cardwell gets a big block, there's they're flashing over to the students, putting up another B. And at the end of the game, when there's 10 blocks like tonight or more than that, even some games, 15, you're going to see it up on the board and they flash over there and they go do a post-game interview with Walker Kessler and behind his head is all his blocks up on there. Make it happen, students. We'll pay for it. We'll make the signs if we need to. The other one is the deep fried memes in real life. We talked about Pablo Escobarner, but if you didn't listen to the episode, 
they used to put fat heads of all the players up and i still think they do it at times you can get them as they walk in we got to deep fry some of those you got to take the signs over to guthrie's dip them in the fryer bring them back and put them in the student section we are getting a lot of people listening to these episodes so i i i would not be shocked if one of those things happened i'm, I'm gonna have some faith here if there's any logistical issues, let me know. I have actually I don't have much time, man, but I'll get it done. I will call up a printer guy. I will get it done. Let somebody let me know. Well, let's talk. Let's talk about the balance scoring. I mean, you've mentioned it. Uh, six guys in double figures. Um, I think at halftime, eight of our nine players that played had three points or more, not just one basket. I mean, everybody was scoring. Um, uh, maybe we should just maybe we, can we just go down player by player and kind of do that? Well, well, while you mention that, I do, I do want to go down the players, and I think it's easier. Like we usually try to like hold that off to the end a little bit, but I think it, you should just go through them now. But before that, I'd like to say, did you realize that they outscored us in the second half? I'm serious. Oh, yeah. I was thinking how oh, yeah. much we we blew them out in the first half. We almost doubled them up with 30 seconds left. There, we were up 50 to 25, and I was like, come on, hold on to it. This stupid stuff you cheer for when you're up by that much and they shot two free throws and then it looks like they did give us that two on walker kessler after the halftime which i didn't realize but uh yeah i didn't realize they outscored us in the second half i mean i did running and gunning but (laughs) they got it down to like 15 like pretty early oh no 15 (laughs) no but but they were they were up on us by 10 in the second half at one point i was like oh and and really we were just not playing very well pretty sloppy there was there was some yakety sacks moments there for a minute it's so hard, though, when you're up. I mean, when you just beat a team by 25 in the first half, I mean, it's just it's hard to put forth that same effort. So, and, and they were still, like, being sloppy and running the ball. Like, it was – we were still playing our game out there. I think we could have locked it up a little more and played it tighter if we if it started getting close, you know. I, I think this is one of those games that Bruce was probably like, I'm taking my hands off, let them play, you know. And he – a different game, he would have tightened them up a little more. We, we can go through the players here. I think that's good. I think because the second best player on this list is the first one on there is uh, Walker Kessler had a great game. Really could have been dominant. Another one of those games, just like uh, Bama Jabari Smith, where it's just such a freak athlete and such a different uh, matchup issue that we could have worked to him. We just don't do that as a team, really. And it's fine, especially if we're winning by 23. I'm cool with that. Uh, it can be frustrating at times when you can see that and you're just, just get it to him, just get it to him. But you also don't want to mess up the like flow and vibe of the team. You know, but 15 points, six blocks, four or six rebounds. He had a great steal where he stole the ball yeah. up at the three-point line or maybe a little further past the three-point line and dribbled himself all the way down and dunked the ball. He's just an, a freak, man. He really is. My dad was so impressed with that play. He texted me and said he thought Kessler should be MVP because of that steal and fast break. Um, but it was, Kessler, close. it was close. Kessler's phenomenal. I mean – he got switched onto their point guard one time and the point guard, anytime a point guard gets a big guy on him, they're like, all right, I got the switch. I'm going to attack him. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to hit a three in his face. The dude dribbled and like tried to get in the lane, like for three seconds, he just gave up the ball. He's like, I'm, I'm not going to drive on him. He had tons of blocks. I can't believe people are still attacking him going to the basket. It blows my mind. Um, I think they, do they think they see the film and they say, well, if we don't attack him, then he's just going to dominate the game anyways because we're altering all our shots and we're not driving the ball. And if we do attack him, maybe we get him in foul trouble. Yeah. And it just kind of ends up depending on the referee crew, which really sucks. Yeah. But you go into the Bama game, and it, uh, I guess that was, I feel like that's been the plan for the last couple of SEC teams. Go at him. Well, he gets the blocks like 80% of the time. But then you have a game like Bama where the refs just suck and they dictate the game and completely change it. And I don't, I don't know how you like – you just got to gamble, I guess. That's just what the refs are going to do. You're just rolling the dice that – He's because at that point, if you're already changing your game plan to not drive the ball and Kessler, you've already like lost the game, or at least you're not going to play very well. So I guess they're kind of gambling that it's like the two out of 10 nights that the referee is going to blow their whistle every time. Uh, I'm just shocked. You know, a lot of guys in basketball don't want to get embarrassed and he's just straight up embarrassed. There was a guy, one of the plays tonight where he tried to like pump fake him and he Kessler stayed on his feet, didn't go for the fake. And he tried to like sneak a quick layup and he just like, destroyed it like he was all over he's it got a, he's got amazing timing he never leaves his feet first and that you know it helps you seven one so he can leave second and still have that such long arms i would love to see the measurement on how long his arms are yeah. a lot of basketball players that are really good have longer arms than their body length and like generally science wise or whatever it seems like the average arm length is the same as your body length 
but some of these great basketball players have a lot longer wingspan wingspans um no, he's just terrific. And I'm really, really thrilled with how we're getting him more involved in the alley-oop game, in our, in our high screen and roll um, action. Wendell's really doing a great job. I, he, when he is an offensive threat for this team, it, it is, it's like when Zepp scores double digits. It's just, it's found money. Like this team, I don't think needs Kessler to score double figures every night, but he tends to. And it really speaks to um, his ability to stay on the floor, his endurance, which we've talked about so many times. But now he's, I mean, he didn't hit a three tonight, but he can. He hit a mid-range jumper tonight. He's and he hitting. hit a three. I, I, know he, I know a couple have gone in, but, man, they were some brutal ones yeah. tonight. No, he's fine. He's. I told you at the beginning of the season, he's going to take two or three a game, and he's going to hit some. And that's just – and they mentioned in the broadcast tonight, and he, I think he told them, you know, I, yeah, Auburn's closer to my home, and, and North Carolina just didn't go great with COVID and everything. It was kind of a rough year. But – but. They, he also specifically mentioned offensive freedom and, you know, well, and we're figuring out ways to get him the ball now. And it's yep. not this traditional back down sense, which he can do. And we've seen some really cool offensive moves from him. We saw a interesting, like reverse behind his head kind yep. of layup tonight. We've seen, I think we saw a good jump, jump shot tonight from around the free throw line. That was really smooth. We've seen some great offensive stuff. So we could work it to him if we need to, if we find the right matchup. We've yeah. also just gotten really good at dumping the ball off to him as he trails behind. The lobs are amazing. Like you texted me this. We're getting to Anthony McLemore, Jared Harper level of lobs, and I'm loving it. I saw a great one tonight. It's really fun when you see them developing, and that was a great pick where he pulled around the back, and you saw it the whole way coming that no one was watching him. Wendell throws it up. He throws it down. It's getting – the timing's getting on, but not just that. The, the people driving are looking where's – Walker when I drive that ball and they weren't doing that at the beginning of the year in my opinion or maybe he wasn't right. in the right place but now I mean it's just we're turning into double double nights like almost every night he didn't get it tonight but he you know similar kind of thing double digits when at the beginning of the year we were happy to get anything from on offense well and just to put that in perspective right imagine you're that defender on the wing and that action is happening coming down the lane where, where did KD hit all his threes tonight from the corner Right. He's really good. He's, he has a really high percentage of hitting corner threes in SEC play. Um, Katie's defender has to decide every single time we run that. Am I going to help on Kessler coming down the lane? And maybe I, I might not even be able to stop it because he's seven one, but I can try. But that's going to leave some shooter for Auburn wide open in the corner for a three. So you're putting the defense in these just really difficult positions and I think that's why you're seeing Auburn put up 80 plus points don't take that for granted either I mean this second half was kind of ho-hum whatever you score 80 plus in the SEC you're going to win most nights and Auburn's offense has been pretty consistent at that so far I looked up 7-4 wingspan for Walker Kessler so he is like three inches yeah. longer in the arm and you can kind of, you can tell he does some freak moves that the other team just does not uh, react to they don't understand how he gets there on some of those especially some if he comes from behind and, and I just want to reinforce, like, his blocks are getting so much attention, and he is a tremendous elite shot blocker, but he is – he does all the little things well. He switches. He communicates on defense. He's extremely reliable. Um, he anchors that defense in every way, and all the aggressive guard play with the steals and the pressure you've mentioned before, all that is allowed because you have guys like Kessler and Cardwell back there backing you up. And if you let your man go by, you trust that big guy to bail you out. Um, so he's just we, we could talk about him a lot longer we don't want to linger but um, he's, we, he's we, we thoroughly broke down Wendell Green and Walker Kessler I think for the rest of these guys let's do some quick analysis we want to keep this one a little shorter tonight and preview a little bit of the Kentucky game everybody's looking forward to uh, Jabari Smith's next 12 points uh, six rebounds or was it more than six rebounds seven rebounds three assists good night smooth guy hit some really good threes I'd love to see him drive a little more that's my thoughts. That was the prettiest 12 points. I mean, I think all of yeah, his yeah. baskets were pretty. He only played 23 minutes, so you almost stole a game where he didn't have to work hard, which is great kind of as we get into this middle part of the season. Um, we know what we've got in him, and, and I kind of like that we were able to showcase our depth and our talent and rather than uh, make him do a ton tonight. Uh, next one up is Alan Flan again. Uh, 10 points, uh, four rebounds, three personal fouls. He just uh, – he's still developing into the system. He, he was injured, you know, the whole time. I think we've we've realized that there was – there is some issues with chemistry that uh, he didn't get to 
you know, we, we kind of forge this team during the, at a conference, it feels like of who's going to touch the ball, who's going to score, who's going to run it. And we thought Allen coming into the year is going to be a big time leader, that it's going to be the guy you defer to at times. And I think he's still trying to figure that out. Luckily he hit two big threes tonight, which is good after he airballed one, I think against Ole Miss. So at least he's got that down as I expected him to be one of our best three point shooters on the team. Now we got a couple guys that can do that, but we still need him to hit those open threes. Uh, he's got some issues right now with getting charges. I feel like he's just like a step behind maybe where he thinks he should be right now. Just something to watch. If we want to be as truly great as we can be, he's got to at least be solid. Right now, he's just a little less than solid. I think we're trending still. I think we're still going to be in the right place when time comes. I would I would correct. I would nitpick two things you said. One, I don't think there's a chemistry issue. And I just want to make sure people, I don't think you're saying this, but I don't. He's not creating a chemistry issue. I, we don't have any signs no, of no, no. being selfish or wanting the ball more. I think it's more of a, like, we talked about this, I think, some last game episode. Like, it's just, there's the ball can only go so many places. You have so many pieces on this team. And for most of the season, he was not there. So the ball naturally and found and other guys. practices before the year started. And these are a bunch of new guys. We, we right. keep forgetting. Kessler's new, Smith's new, K. Johnson's new. All the other starters with him are new, and they all bonded through the out of conference and through the practices and everything. Know where somebody's going to be, what they're going to do. Like they already like know everything that's going to happen. These guys, they might be just that half second with Flanagan, and it makes all the difference. Same with him trying to get them to stuff. So you're right. I don't think it's an attitude issue. It's uh, they're just still developing where everybody's going to be. But but his minutes are there. He's, he's scoring in double figures. Look at his efficiencies tonight, 50% or better on everything. He, he won us the Bama game at the free throw line with ice water. Um, he's rebounding. He's defending. He looks healthy. He was out in transition, had a really good dunk. Um, I, I, I am, I, he's better than solid, in my opinion, is where he's at right now. I just, I have high expectations for him. So I think he, he I think he Jackson can is the biggest better. Alan Flanagan guy yeah. that I know. Yep. And then, uh, so next up, Katie Johnson, home, not homecoming necessarily, but playing against this old team, 12 points, uh, three fouls, two steals, two rebounds, three of eight from three-point land, 410 from the field. Uh, I put my pregame notes, wondering if he could stay in control during this game, and I think he tried a little too hard to start the game. I don't think his shots were awful, but he definitely, like, wanted the ball in his hand. He wanted to shoot. He had his chance at this game. A lot of people wanted him to drop 30 on UGA and had this big game. He had his chance. He just didn't drop those threes to start the game. And he's such a streaky guy at this point. Sonny, Sonny talks about it in his radio call a lot that if you can get KD going, he plays so much better both on offense and defense. And he just couldn't get going to start the game. He was solid. He was fine. He give and he takes. He hits a big three and then immediately gives up a two on the other side. He loved the energy. You never thought there would be a player with more energy than Cardwell. Uh, you hope maybe after he's gotten this one out of the way, that maybe he comes into that UG game in Athens with a little more focus and it comes to him a little more and you might still end up with one of those great games. Well, I, I will say, I think he forced a little bit early, but after that first three minute stretch, four minute stretch, he, um, he, he had his rotation. He sat out when he came back in, he got beautiful dimes from Wendell. I think on a couple of them, wide open threes, perfect rhythm switch just, and if, Man, if he's that guy where he he's taking his shots in the offense, he's still attacking. He gave up the ball to Allen on one of his threes on a nice drive. I thought after that first three minutes, I thought KD was really good the rest of the way. So um, I'm glad for him. I'm glad the crowd was like gave him a huge ovation in the starting lineup. They were clearly invested. You know, it's his old team and all that. And uh, I think that's part of the reason why the players kind of were other than the ranking and everything else. I, I think they were they wanted to do some have an impressive win for him in that game. He definitely had his biggest freak out of all the freak outs I think he's had in this entire time. And he's had some big scores to do the free outs. He had one tonight where he hit a three or something. They called a timeout. He ran over to the corner of the student section. I was afraid he was going to hurt himself with the, like, contortions he was doing. But he loved the energy. Uh, he, next, As somebody said, and I'm God, this is going to be my phrase the rest of the year, somebody tweeted tonight during the game that uh, – he might be a psycho, but he's our psycho, and we love him. Love it. <laughs> put him in. You can't put him in a straight jacket; it'll break out. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, Zep. Three points, one steal, one of five from three, three rebounds. He's fine, quiet, you know. But that's that's Zep, and he he doesn't ever. You know, it's almost a good thing if Zep's quiet. There's so many guys on this team that are in the starting role that if Zep's quiet and you don't think about Zep, that's probably means he's doing his job, and you're not 
noticing it. And that, that's what this team needs, honestly, is he, he's, he knows his role more than anybody else in this team. Yep. He's, if you're going to pick who each role is, he's probably 10 out of 10 at what we need him to do. Well, and on uh, shooting and scoring, like, I think he still gets us off to such good starts with that starting group. Um, he, he, hit, he has to take a lot of threes at the end of the shot clock. That's what that was tonight. Wendell does too. A lot of times, um, you know, you see Zepp's one of five from three. Wendell was one of five from three. A lot of that's because the point guard, if you have a bad possession and you have the ball with two seconds left, you got to jack it up. Um, Zepp wouldn't want to shoot that many threes. I, I've watched him. But a lot of the thing I want to say about him, I have heard multiple national people. I think it's just become a thing. You know, a couple of media people say something. Everybody starts repeating it. But people are calling him one of the best on-ball defender in America. So maybe people. They said that at the beginning of the year. They've said it like they're, you're right. I think there's like a 50 50 well, thing of. But, but I haven't heard it. Enough, you know? I didn't hear it in America at the beginning of the year. Right. I heard on our. Well, team. it's just like that with the team. Your team gets this national spotlight. And then all of a sudden, these sure. players that might not have gotten noticed before are getting that notice. But I've seen players retweeting that, you know, on Twitter and saying, hey, yeah, this is our guy. Like he just, poor Georgia point guard was exhausted and he, he was just. You could see it. at the end of the game, honestly. They were, they were yeah. slugging, they were slow at the end. Yeah. Uh, we got to see a Chris Moore sighting. Not much to say about it. Glad he got in. I wish he could have gotten. There was a time where I was texting Matt Chris Moore time. I thought he could have gotten in. There were like about five minutes left, and they didn't put him in until about two minutes left, pretty much with the walk-ons. And that's just how it is. We can just go on from there. Uh, Jalen, Matt's a big Jalen Williams guy. A, a quiet 13 points, uh, five rebounds. Played well in, in very limited minutes, right? How much was the minutes for him? 16. 16, super efficient, 16 minutes. I'll let you talk about Jalen. Thank you. I, he was not quiet to me. Uh, attacked the basket, mid-range shots, hit a three, hit his free throws, um, had a dunk. You know, I, I just – I thought he was terrific. Um, it's nice to see him get a little more of a split on that uh, power forward. You know, Jabari played 23. He played 16. I think that's fair. Um, and I, over, overall, I did want to point out, this is what Bruce wants to play minutes-wise. Nobody played more than 27. Kessler, again, played the most minutes of anybody on the team. It's crazy. Um, but Jalen well, was it's great. It's going to pay off when we have that Kentucky game. It's going to pay off in later months. Yep. And I just – you just – it's great to have – we've talked about all the time. These guys coming off the bench started for us last year, <laughs> a couple of these guys. And so, anyway, I just think it's good when Jalen has games like this. I, it reinforces, you know, in SEC competition. He did it against Florida. He's got it here. Um he can really do some damage if we ever get stuck with Jabari in foul trouble or anything like that. It's great to have him. Which they're trying to get Jabari in foul trouble. Every yep. It seems like the last couple of games, and they talked about in this one, they're trying to get in his ear. They're trying to mess with him. There's a weird play right at the beginning where a guy tried to draw a foul by pretending like his ribs were hurt, and they, like, reviewed it, and there was no foul on the play. They're, they're trying to figure out how to get Jabari's head, and I think they're doing a good job. Jabari got a tech or two early in the season. And I think that was harassing him a bit. And I think they've gotten into Jabari's head that he's going to have to be mentally tough along with being physically tough and it's working. Mm -hmm. uh, next one up's uh, Cardwell. Uh, four points, three blocks were big. Uh, he just plays a lot of energy. Uh, you know, the stat line's just not going to show it, but yep. he played great out there when Walker wasn't in. I didn't feel like we missed a step really. He, uh, I don't know, he's, he's, he's a ton of fun. He, he does it. He's like just kind of like Zip. He does his role so well he got a ticky tack second foul early in the first half that kind of limited his minutes a little bit tonight but man can you imagine being georgia you're gassed you're down 25 with two minutes to go and cardwell's in there just like eating your lunch blocking your shots running out pumping up the crowd i mean that's gotta be so annoying and so like just depressing that you're having to play against this guy who just never stops I mean, you've got to take him out if you want him to stop it he's fantastic uh, I want him to come on the podcast at some point. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Uh, the, another interesting fact about Cardwell, we talk all of, all day long about Walker Kessler's 4.1 blocks per game. I don't know if this is updated through this game or not. The fourth guy in the list, top five, Walker Kessler, Colin Castleton, Charles Badaco from Alabama, then Dylan Cardwell. We have two guys in the top 10 in blocks. So, And Cardwell's playing such limited minutes. So I don't know if he, his block numbers would necessarily like exponentially – increase with time just because i'm sure he would get worn out in times and he comes in with so much energy but to be fourth on the list of blocks with probably averaging like what 10 to 12 minutes or something like that a game yeah. incredible 
He's, if he probably did it by minutes, he would be blowing everybody out. Yeah. And we're, we're the top team in the nation in blocks per game, right? And we were for a we long were time. Last time I checked, I'll check it again. So, I mean, this whole team is just so athletic. It's, it's silly. I mean, the amount, and Jalen can block shots, Jabari can block shots. Um, every, I mean, really, uh, uh, Cambridge can. Like, it, it's, it, it's an embarrassment of riches on the defensive backboard, the block shots we have. We've, we played 17 games as of tonight, right? Or 16? Uh, 18. 18 or 17. So this months. list is not updated yet. Walker's still in second for blocks shot per game nationally behind uh, this humongous seven foot guy, five guy from Western Kentucky. Uh, he could catch up. He, he got six, six blocks this game. He wouldn't take over this guy either way through that. Cause the other guy's up by eight blocks, but he's still got time. Uh, still incredible. If I'm looking at uh, team statistics, we are still number one, at least through 17 games when this hasn't been updated yet. And we're killing the other team. We have 142 blocks. The next one is UConn. We played earlier this year with 117 that's a big difference <laughs> so yeah. amazing it's been so much fun to watch and again gotta get the block signs yep let's get it who's next next one up's cambridge uh two points <laughs> oh of three from three he didn't play a ton he got his alley-oop in it, it, we thought he wasn't gonna get it in Sonny was very upset on the radio broadcast uh, he had two that he got dragged down on they didn't call anything on very frustrating it's something that like i feel like you don't see it very often like you so the refs maybe aren't quite looking for it. They're maybe looking somewhere else when that ball goes up, but they're dragging him down, trying to keep him from lifting up there. He finally got his alley-oop with like four or five minutes left on like a kind of yakety sacks back and forth. That's where he thrives the most is when it's like chaos. And then all of a sudden I know where, you know, Cambridge is going to end up with an alley-oop. So. Bruce, Bruce was really mad about that first missed call. It's very dangerous to be manipulating a guy in midair like that as, as high as he gets. Um, yeah. I'm glad to see him get the heat. He, he, he just gets – his job is so much easier now because literally no one on the other team is concerned with him. So when Wendell gets in the paint and that uh, baseline is open, he's going to make that run every time. And if Wendell throws it, he's going to go get it. Um, so, anyway, it's fun. I'm glad he has that role. Um, you know, he's going to take his threes. Uh, we debated whether he was streaky last time. He, he was cold tonight. Um, but, anyway, he – again – uh, He's cold a lot of nights, when, but, uh, you know. <laughs> when he's your eighth or ninth offensive option, you know, you're doing okay. I was going to, I was going to say that when you were bragging on how we had starters from last year, I think guys like Cambridge and Jalen Williams, they prematurely started last year. They might not have been quite ready for sec starting, at least not for the level that we want to play at Auburn, the program that Bruce Pearl's playing, they would have been fine starting 10 years ago. They would have been stars, you oh, yeah. know, but uh, they prematurely started last year. They're, past it this year they should they would probably start in a couple different teams in the sec maybe like probably 50 percent of the teams they would start on if not more at least Jalen would probably start on maybe 80 percent of the teams or something like that but we're getting a great experience to see they got the experience last year when it ends up if you look at the grand scheme of things was kind of just like a practice year almost at this point now we're getting these like guys with starting experience on our bench was amazing and we're hoping by next year when some people leave that we have some guys that have had very good seasoning in all aspects of the game, as long as they stick around. Uh, what do you want to talk about next? You want to get into shout out stuff? You want to get SEC well, stuff? I think pregame thoughts we pretty much went over. Oh, yeah. We, we had, got through them real quick and just skip any that. Yeah, you know, we had similar there. ones tonight. Um, there weren't that many storylines. I know we talked, we both talked about KD and we kind of touched here's, on that. Yours was uh, can Auburn take control of the game early against a UGA team that has struggled this year? Yep. Yep. How does KD handle playing against his former team? We talked about that through that. Could Auburn keep their turnover number in, in single yeah. digits? Good job. Oh, that you was up. great to see. I really felt like that's the key. Um, it had gone down every game. We had six last game. This is eight. But if you're below 10, I'm happy. So the fact that I think we had three in the first half. So it was a really clean first half of play. That led to all the shot advantages we talked about. So to me, that was a big key. It was awesome to see us take care of the ball and play that kind of wild style we were able to play that's really hard to do yeah i said we were being sloppy but in the statistics sheet it was uh, only eight turnovers so all right uh mine was can kd kd play under control against this old team i was afraid he would come in a little too much energy a little too much uh anxiousness and he, he did push a little bit at the front but overall it worked out pretty well uh i said can we blitz them early and avoid hard minutes down the stretch i feel like we did we got them early so that you we saw how these minutes kind of ended up about where we wanted them to end up in fact, with about five minutes left, I was kind of like, why put Jabari back in? Why put Wendell back in? Like, we could have done something, but I could see how Bruce is, like, trying to keep 
people the, the foot like the foot on the throat not just for this game but in all games in general yep. my last one was can we use this game to get Fleming and comfortable and shooting well I was glad to see this first two threes go in that that's still big even if the rest of the game didn't so give so great he got two charge fouls on him we'll see he's still working on it but we really don't at this point the team's playing so well that we don't need him to actually like necessarily click for another couple games. Sure. Kentucky's coming up on Saturday. So it'd be nice to have, feel like you're a hundred percent instead of 95%. But at the end of the day, if it takes until half, like the last quarter of the sec, I'm okay. Cool. Let's, let's do a little, uh, well, do you want to, little, I figured we can do a little shout outs real quick. Uh, right. We got so many reviews and we said we would talk about them when we got them. So uh, Greg for you for Auburn said, this thing's great I'm not going to read through the actual all the reviews go on there and read them if you want the funniest one was that the bleeping out the effort one but Greg for you AU Raider Davo AU JL Mataja 23 Big Ball Sam said need more Auburn men basketball podcast thoroughly enjoy it uh, we got Jankery again Shade 38 said WDE CL Ding AU didn't we have a who was the the block guy, not Kyle Davis, but the different one. Was his name Ding something? It's probably him. Probably one of our four players, I bet. Sparky, 54. Uh, Tiger time. Thanks, guys. We got a ton of 32 ratings. All five stars. No one dislikes us. You, you would think a Bammer or somebody would come in there and do something. So we're that efficient. We're all five stars. And then also on Twitter, we've, we've been getting a lot more active. I think we had our mentions here from a guy named Auburn Dad. At Auburn Dad mentioned us as said uh, we're playing UGA basketball 8 p.m. on ESPN2 and Auburn Arena. And if you want to hear people talk about it, you go to at Auburn Jungle. And I agree. Well, it's just cool. I mean, we we thought when we started this that there was a little niche in the market or niche, however you say that, that just there weren't a lot of just regular people who, you know, at least pay attention and kind of know basketball talking about it live after the game. Um, I, I think we've seen enough that there's enough people out there that are at least semi-interested in that. So it's been really cool for us. Obviously we caught this season so far has been amazing and we've had so much fun talking about it and watching it, but you know, keep, uh, keep sharing it, keep listening. And I mean, we just kind of keep seeing our numbers grow. We're not in it to do ads or make money or anything like that. So we're just here to enjoy this ride with everybody. And it's fun to think, to see, you know, people watching it on YouTube, listening kind of along with us. I know everybody's so engaged with this team right now. Um, it's fun to be like a very small part of that. I'm still waiting for Kyle Pence to hit me up so we can be best friends. So Kyle, come on, hit us up. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter now. If that's what you need, we're going to be best friends. Oh, was the OG, the OG. Yes. Right? Um, let's talk a little bit about just big picture and then we'll zoom in. If it's cool with you uh, again, we're, we hate these late night game. Well, Jackson is on Eastern time, so it kind of keeps him up late. Relative. As long as we're winning, I'm down to talk. I'll stay up all night. If you want to talk about Auburn basketball all night, we don't care. But so this is Wednesday night. All the midweek games are over. So we have a really good like view of where the SEC stands um, tonight. Mississippi State lost to Florida, which state only had one loss coming into tonight. So they have two now. Um, both LSU and Bama now have three losses as Alabama won against a weakened LSU team, which is annoying, but. It is what it is. This is the parody they thought everyone would have. They didn't expect Auburn to be this good. And now we could lose to Kentucky, and then all of a sudden it looks very yeah. parody. But if we win against Kentucky, we're going to be very solidly. We'll, we'll talk there. about that. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, and and Kentucky beat AM. So AM now has their first conference loss. So yeah, like leading into this game, this is if Auburn wins, it's a two game lead on Kentucky. It's a three-game lead on LSU, Arkansas, Tennessee, Alabama, and everybody else. And then A&M and Mississippi State are kind of – maybe they're really – they're playing well right now, obviously. A&M could have beaten Kentucky tonight easily. Um, but the, the teams that you would expect would be there for the 18-game stretch run. Auburn would have multiple game leads on all of them, which would, and, and tiebreakers over Kentucky and LSU so um, and Alabama. So fixing them schedule start going to start getting a little harder. They, they really played a week schedule to start. And that's why I even saw an ESPN graphic today that Joe Lenardi still expects them to not make the tournament. I'm like, you know, they were tied from the top up there with us. And then they expect them not to make the tournament. They play, they play Kentucky at home and lost, which was a good win for Kentucky. Honestly, I know that Texas almost got them, but 
Kentucky had this insane performance against Tennessee where they shot 70 plus percent from the field. That really scared me. It was good to see they came down to earth a little bit in the six a m game, but like we talked about away wins are really hard, especially against a team like Texas A&M. Even if they're not that great, they still have momentum and at home, but Texas A&M plays Arkansas next LSU on the road, uh, South Carolina, Tennessee. So they, they start kind of turning up their schedule a little bit. So we'll yep. see if they're actually sticking around or not. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, obviously the alternative is if Auburn goes and loses to Kentucky, which Kentucky's playing really confidently right now, they have a lot of talent. Um, it, it's very possible if Auburn loses, they're tied at the top with Kentucky after that game. And Kentucky would have that mythical tiebreaker that Tennessee claims counts for something. Um, or actually, no, we claim it counts for something. Yeah, so I guess- the, the issue is if uh, <laughs> I always get upset that we beat Tennessee at Tennessee the year we won the SEC, and then at, by the end they say they tied us up and they, we both claimed the SEC t- uh, regular season that year. And I say, how can you do that when the tiebreaker is us winning at their place? In your place. So if that happens to us, though, and we end up in some crazy thing where we only have one or two losses and we're tied with Kentucky and they have a win on us at home, I'm just going to shut up <laughs> and yeah. enjoy it. All of a sudden, it's, it's a homer take for sure. But yeah. Well, well. so what, like, I'm trying to, so do you think, I, I like the way this sets up. We, 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 we t- touched on it briefly, the, the ranking thing. A couple guys voted us low in the AP and coaches poll and kept us out of number one. The, um, I'm glad we got past this game, you know, to, we can look ahead to this. People are calling it the biggest home game in Auburn Arena history. Uh, when you think about what's on the line and the caliber of the teams. Um, you could argue maybe that South Carolina game where we had to win it to win the yeah. SEC that year, but that was not anywhere near this opponent. And this might you might look back at this one and say this was the reason we ended up in the FC. But Especially when you look down Kentucky's schedule now where we were talking about things being parallel or whatever, but if they can beat us in this game and play the way they did against Tennessee, it's going to be a lot harder to look down the schedule and see a lot of losses. Same for us if you look past our, yeah. this Kentucky game we should be favored in every game. And so we, you know, this could be the one we look back on was the grudge match. Now, both teams probably will drop one in there, but it's going to be hard to hold your breath waiting for Kentucky to lose another game. Yeah, no, it's a great point. Um, It's a huge, I I like the way this sets up for us. Um, You know, you have the number one thing. We always have that chip on our shoulder, Bruce Pearl thing going against Kentucky every time, no matter how high ranked we are, he's going to have those guys like, hey, Kentucky didn't want most of you. this is our, and it's the Auburn arena thing. It's the aura of that, that everybody's gushing over. It's going for number one. It's for sole possession of control first place in the league, which I think the conference championship is really significant to this team. And I, I just like how all those factors set up. And I, I watched a lot of that AM Kentucky second half, especially. And I got to say um, what Kentucky did last Saturday against Tennessee was not human. I mean, that, that was weird. This was a rock fight between two physical, big, they played really hard, but it was not the prettiest basketball. It looked completely different from how Auburn plays basketball. So I was a little encouraged by the fact A&M shot one of 21 from three and had a chance in the last minute of that game to win. They were at home and A&M was playing really well. I just so, so is this one. They Kentucky lost at LSU. That's their one loss. Well, they had a tough one at Texas and now we're playing at Auburn Arena. So that's a good sign there. Well, let's 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 look at this. This is the really I don't I haven't watched a ton of um, Kentucky, but let's look at how they've done on the road or, or away from home. OK, they lost to Duke early in the year. They lost at Notre Dame. Which is not very good this year. I watched they that. lost at LSU in a close one. And they beat the only A&M. away with the only way win they have at Texas A&M. They no, beat they Vanderbilt by twelve, and they beat A and M by six. So, like, if you're looking for reasons to be optimistic, other than how good our team is, Kentucky hasn't really proven that they can go on the road and just dominate like they did on Saturday. So, uh, I can't wait though. I what what are your thoughts on kind of this matchup? We wanted to take some time to just look ahead to this game. I know everybody's going to be super pumped about it, but what are you kind of thinking now? We're six and zero. Oh, it's battle for first place. What are your thoughts? Uh, super excited. We, we're pissed. So is the entire Auburn fan base that we're not number one. We talked about it on Saturday as if it was like a solidified concrete thing. Well, if we done the, if the AP voters had done the right thing, we would have been there. If one guy, I believe his name was Jason Newell, would have done the right thing, we would have been there. We missed it by four like cumulative votes. And it's because one guy put us number nine in his 
uh, ballot. Another guy picked us number six. The only two guys that do something like that. And if either of those guys put us in the correct place, even one or two, we would have been number one in this game. And it would have been number one Auburn versus number 12 Kentucky. And that just has a, a slightly different ring than number two Auburn versus Kentucky. Uh, the one bright spot, like silver lining of that is the fan base is very angry. So you got to think that the players are also feeling that disrespect. And I don't think this would have affected the team necessarily, even if we'd gone number one. And I think it's worth whatever silver lining to get that out of the way as a program and say we've done it and get that spot. Like I think one versus 12 still in the zeitgeist. This game's going to be on CBS before the NFL playoff game, the Titans and whoever they're playing. But that's huge. There'll be plenty of people tailgating and plenty of people just sitting around on Saturday waiting for those playoff games, excited, going to bars, wherever. And they're going to end up watching the second half of this game, getting ready for their game. It's going to be huge for Jabari if he has one of those games, huge for like the Shibwe guy. If he has a game, it's be one of those games that puts, you know, if Jabari goes off, it'll be the game that puts him as like a household name, honestly, and Auburn in general too. So it's a huge moment for us. Probably the, right, the biggest home game moment we can think of, not just for the like implications for our own team, but the way the spotlight's coming with CBS. And don't underrate the playoff NFL game as much as we love college basketball. If you look at ratings, the NFL and college football still outstrip college basketball. Like we, it looks minuscule compared to that. So if you can catch any of that audience, it's huge and get any of that national relevance. I'm super excited. I think we have the team that can beat Kentucky. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, too, I'm scared of the Sheboy guy. Yeah. I just, I think it's a huge moment. We're looking forward to, I'm hoping some kids will camp out. I know it's going to be super cold. I think it's going to 27 in Auburn. Uh, let us know if you know people camping out. We want to like send some pizzas or get like some sort of correspondent from that. We want to see, like enjoy that atmosphere. So I hope some people are camping out so we can kind of see like this freak at Auburn basketball atmosphere that we've never seen before. A lot of people were joking. You might as well just get in line after this game tonight and just uh, <laughs> get ready. You know, you it's, we're only 48 hours away from playing. Um, if you're looking for another little factor, right? Kentucky had to go to Texas A&M. I assume they'll come back to Kentucky late, late, late tonight. And then they will have to go to Auburn probably tomorrow or Friday. So can you look, can you look at their box score and see what their minutes were. I know this is so we're getting super deep into this, but that's how excited I am for this Kentucky matchup. Uh, another aspect that I'm hoping, you know, we're angry about this number two ranking. Some people are saying, take it out on Georgia. I hope we don't feel like we took it out on Georgia. I hope we feel like we take it out on Kentucky. You know, I feel like I hope we don't miss any whatever little energy. I think Bruce has got this team playing well and the attitudes on this team. It's not going to really matter, but you hope that you're looking for any little edge because this game's going to be so big. I'm going to be anxious as I'll get out for every little moment in this game. Even if we're like up by 10, I'll be losing it, you know, for like every foul call. Uh, go ahead and expect that we will be in foul trouble the entire game because that's what happens every time we play Kentucky. I really want a beat writer, somebody that has a little more time on their hands or does this professionally to figure out how many more fouls we have in Kentucky games than any other game. Like, sure, they have a better athletes a lot of times than a lot of other teams, but man, every single year and every single matchup it feels like we're in foul trouble the entire time so that'll be huge to watch the game if walker kessler doesn't pick up a foul or two to start the game or jabari too they're, they're going to go after jabari and try to get those foul calls so that'll be huge to watch the, the key for that is always can you just survive that first three minutes that's really all walker plays two or three minutes to start the game then they get cardwell in really fast they might do the same with Jalen too um, Kentucky played seven guys mainly tonight and three of the starters were in over 30 minutes. So the rest, the rest of them, four of them actually. So they, and that was a war. I mean, that was a, that was a physical, it reminded me of a slow paced LSU Auburn game where it was just very physical, very, uh, I don't know, very 14, 14 rebounds for Sheway. He's just a freak in rebounding. Yep. I haven't gotten to watch as much as I'd like. You know, but I often be watching that the well, entire game just to see how he does it. I don't know if it's like Charles Barkley esque with the way he like is a, a larger guy that can clear people out, but that'll be something to watch. Uh, Kessler's had a little bit of trouble with bigger guys like Castleton and Sonogo at UConn. So it'll be interesting. He doesn't, I don't think Shibwe is a big score necessarily, but it'll be interesting to see if they try to get Shibwe like uh, driving, not driving the ball, but backing Walker Kessler in, trying to get fouls on him. It, it'll be interesting to see what Calipari does. It, and this could be the Bruce Pearl death lineup game where you play Jalen Summit center to try to pull Sheboy away from the basket and make him guard the three-point line. I mean, Kessler will take some, but 
you know, it's not as big of a big of a threat. I, you mentioned Kessler Shibway is going to be the the big matchup, and it should be. I'm really, really fascinated. How does if Walker stands up to this one and and makes that a draw? I mean, that's a huge win. What about the little guards? Severe Wheeler was at Georgia last year. He's kind of running the point for them, doing a Wendell Green impression. That's going to be a he had eight turnovers tonight, by the way. Wow. Come on, Jungle, get in his head, get him to turn the ball over. That's a great matchup. Ty Ty Washington was a guy we really wanted on this. Auburn team in the recruiting cycle it's supposed to be their their biggest guy she weighs their their household name right now they always have a guy that they're pushing or whatever Kentucky and the national writers are always going to find somebody to talk about like Kentucky but Ty right. Washington was supposed to be their five-star like Jabari Smith level guy and he's been fine right he's got some huge NIL deals before he ever got there with Gatorade and different people I think he has several cars maybe that he got so I like that Jabari is not. I think I'm sure Jabari is getting some money if the, if he found some documents somewhere from these NIOs, like Under Armour's pushing Jabari, but it's well, different. I mean, and and who's going to guard him? Like, how does that? You know, that could be a Flanagan, um, Flanagan, KD Johnson assignment coming up. So I'm I'm just really fascinated for the matchups. I think it's a great game. So much talent on the floor. Um, the question. I really, from, I really feel like there's this is the Alabama game. Jabari stepped up and had the best game of his year the best game of his career so far and looked unstoppable and that was also the biggest game for us this year and I wonder how much of that you hope that he's that kind of guy that when the spotlight's on him he turns it up and he has that next level and I wondered this will be another like well we need this kind of stuff for March I think we want to talk about March that much because this game is so huge for the SEC and, and just enjoy it while you have it but if Jabari turns it up in this one again we know we have one of those guys that is so rare that he goes off. I'm really like, you know, one is a coincidence, two is a trend or whatever. I'm crossing my fingers and holding my breath that this is another big time Jabari game where he can't be stopped. And when he can't be stopped, we don't necessarily have to walk, work, it, work it to him, but he's going to get his and it's a threat that they're just going to have to cover the whole time. You know, tight ties guarding him or whoever's guarding him one of the forwards there, Topin, or maybe even Sheway. Maybe Sheway is the one that gets in foul trouble if he's trying to guard Jabari. I don't know. It's going to be really interesting. I, you talked about the telecast and the, the broadcast. CBS, Bill Raftery, if, you, if you're a college basketball guy, there's nobody better. Um, he's kind of, in my mind, right up there with a the Dickie V, like in terms of being around the sport for so long. You've got the CBS music playing for the tournament. You know, you're going to have that intro. It's going to be awesome. And just, it, it really is. If you're not nervous about this game, you don't care enough. This is a massive opportunity for the program, for all the things we've talked about. But most importantly, it, it would put Auburn in a better position through seven games than we could have ever hoped for looking ahead in our SEC preview of where this team would be. It's like if you can get this one and just find a way to win somehow, protect the jungle, send Kentucky home, like, it, man, the the – I mean, this thing is already so big with how this season has gone, just with Twitter and how this team is being watched. And everybody's just so – I mean, if we get this one, it's just even going to pick up even more steam. And uh, I, I'm with you. I think is this, a, is this a Jabari game where he elevates up to that level and kind of carries us? At, but history shows us with this team, it could be it, – it's going to be two or three or four guys. And, and honestly, I'm not sure who it will be, but I – Again, we play it feels nine good, right? It feels good that it could be anybody. Yeah, there was, you know, we, there's a lot of talk about comparing this team to the final four team. And that team, we luckily it happened every game. It felt like Bryce Brown and Jared Harper were going to go off at some point during the game. At some point, Bryce Brown was going to hit like three threes in a row or four threes in a row and just go off. But you had to have them go off. It was one of those two guys that need to go off. Chuma didn't become big Chum until late in that season. Wow. And this, this one feels like. Yeah, if one of them gets in foul trouble, something happens. We still have several other dudes that are ready to go. No one on this team will shrink. Walker Kessler won't shrink. Jabari won't shrink. KD won't shrink. Wendell won't shrink. You know, some of these other players, you know, then you might have on top of that, like those guys are the dudes that I feel like aren't going to shrink. Flanagan won't shrink either, even though I feel like he's still working his way in. But then on top of that, you got guys like Cardwell and Jalen Williams and Zepp that can just kind of come in and do their thing. And it could be one of those games where we luck out and they have a game that's huge. Jalen Williams can hit a two or three threes to start the game. And all of a sudden that that's a big difference, you know, Cambridge, even as much as I 
like I'm critical of Cambridge. If he comes in and hits a three or two to start the game, that's a big deal. He gets an alley oop or two to start the game, and all of a sudden the game is, you know, that's bonus. It's all bonus points compared to kind of what we expect. You're you're so right. And I think if this game was in Rupp, I I I really think we just have such a bad history there, and that place is that's where you see the I'm gonna do your foul research, by the way. Remind me tomorrow. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it together. Um I feel I feel pressure on this game, not necessarily because it's of the situation or the number one. I feel pressure because I think we should win. And that is just step back. You know, people have been saying all week, step back and realize that people are mad that Auburn basketball is not number one in the country. Well, take a step back and think if you're nervous like me and it's because you feel like there's going to be this attention. And it, it's not because we're scared of the moment. It's because I think this team is actually better. I think they're better than Kentucky. And I just hope that that shows through, and I hope they can find a way to put that on display for everybody to see. The, the crazy thing is not only does it feel like we're better Kentucky, we, we might be coming back and eating our words on this next one. Yeah. But not yeah. only does it feel like we're better than Kentucky as a team right now, like we actually feel like we're molded, it also feels like we have better talent than Kentucky. And that's the real difference right there. Maybe Every better other, depth. Maybe better depth. Okay. Is there, there's no one on that team that's better than Jabari. There's no one on that team that's better than Walker. She weighs different than Walker, you know, so you might could say you, if you would trade them back and forth or whatever, but no one's better than Jabari Smith on that team. You can say that at least. And so that, that's a big difference that most of the other times we're trying to be a better team to their talent. And sometimes you're, you're always wondering every single year, pretty much the national writers and everybody else is Kentucky going to become the team the the great, can they reach the pinnacle that their talent has basically? And they have not done that. And I feel like even then we still match them up talent wise. And so that's something we've never experienced before. And I'm looking forward to seeing the other piece. Uh, I, I believe we've kind of split with them in the last six years or something. You know, we've won a lot against Kentucky, the elite eight game and the, the game you go. Um, you mentioned the one we lost, but the Kareem Canty game, if you go way back when this thing was first getting rolling, like Auburn has had success against Kentucky in Auburn arena. So there's a lot of, um, we should have had another one where that ball went in and out with Jerry. We were in foul trouble the entire time, of course. Final four year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was brutal. Ironically, I think that was the main loss, I believe. Maybe one other one. But, I mean, that was really the only loss in the last five or six years at home against it. Kentucky is probably the last team on the list that I've said this at times. And we're talking about – some people are talking about the memes. Peacocking about how we're done, like, being, like – conservative or hedging our bets or whatever we're going to peacock we're good it's time for us to admit we're good it's time for everyone else to admit we're good we're not playing this underdog role anymore it's time to like go into i love that comparison a lot of people are putting this emojis and things uh, that's a big one with kentucky that everyone else at the sec is getting to a point where they don't like us we're uh we're like too much on twitter we're whatever uh there's they, time for them to be beat or whatever and i like that you want to get to a point. If you want your team to be good, you want to get to a point where people hate you. You don't want to hear anymore in the comment sections different things like Auburn bros, blah, blah, blah. It's just cool to see you guys do well. Like I'm, I'm ready for Tennessee fans to hate Bruce Pearl because we beat them every single year. I'm ready for Kentucky fans. They're the last ones left that still see in comment sections. You still see them say, oh, it's just nice that there's another SEC team that's really good. It's, it's good for the league. You know, I want to get to the point after this game or after this season when we win it if we can win it after beating them for them to be like, screw those guys. They need to be put back in their place. We don't like them anymore. Like all this kind of stuff. Cause that means we're good. If, if the other, if every team in your league like or hates you, that means you're probably doing something right. And, and this isn't hedging. This is just, you and I both, we've talked off the podcast, you know, like this is, this is the game. Like this is the big, the most challenging game on the schedule. In my opinion, fortunately we only play them once. Fortunately it's at home. But that doesn't diminish, you know, how big this is. And it, it's an ultimate sign to Kentucky. Of, it means something when you beat Kentucky because of their history of, of their basketball program and everything. This one obviously has a lot of other stuff going on. But every time you beat Kentucky in basketball, it matters. And you hope that maybe over the next five or ten years, you get people talking the same way about Auburn. When you go into Auburn Arena and win, it matters and you remember it you remember what happened to that your team went in there and actually won and i think we're building that but kentucky has that in their whole history going way back so shout out to the jungle again we already we already shouted them out but man amazing and you're seeing on twitter you're seeing in broadcast people are just not even hedging their bets or anything this anymore the Auburn arena best arena in the sec 
no one even like tries to say there's another oh this other one's great tour they no they just say it it's a fact Auburn Arena best arena best fans in the SEC and now you're getting a lot of attention nationally too you're never going to break through probably like the North or not North Carolina but Duke and that atmosphere and a couple other ones but it is now being said one of the best national atmospheres and that's huge too like don't wait around for the day where they say we're the best in the nation because that's just not going to happen when there's so many other ones with deep history but that's all you can do right so win this one on CBS and we talk about building a foundation putting this thing in for the day like hopefully in 10 plus years when Bruce Pearl's ready to retire and move on or whatever hopefully this is another like tent pole cement like foundation whatever you call it like a uh, structural like what do they call them things that go up and down in buildings uh that sounds so stupid uh beam uh, steel uh, beams in our program that we look up on this is going to be one of those games i hope well uh, yeah and as much as i hate it because if we lose and we don't get that number one i i'm not as worried about the number one as a lot of people but it, it would stink to kind of miss that opportunity like you said they don't that doesn't come along all the time you have to have the right team the right schedule and the right opportunity to get it but it is fitting in a way that auburn has to work a little extra harder earn a little more respect and what do you have to do to get it you have to go through you know the the big bit bully that's standing in your way between what you want to accomplish with a championship and number one and all that. It, it, if we get it, if we win it, it will be, I, to me, it'll be up there with any feeling I've had about Auburn basketball my whole life. If we can get that game, not to overplay one regular season game, but I think if you've watched and been a part of this program, you know, this, this one matters. And I think there's going to be a different level in Auburn arena on Saturday, and I am uh, very envious of all the people who will get to be in them. We, we, we talk about, you know, we talked about SEC, and we actually, on some of the other ones, talk nationally, too. Lots of teams are losing. Lots of top ten teams, number one teams, number four, or five, six, seven, all losing. Some of them twice in a week kind of stuff. It's crazy to me that we couldn't get that number one when we're the only team with one loss left, have not lost in regulation, never done a loss podcast. And so it just still can't get number one even with that. And so you have to know that, like, there should have been a thing that if we got number one this week and then lost at home to Kentucky, we shouldn't have dropped. We should have dropped maybe a spot or two, maybe to three, maybe two. We'd have another chance to get back into number one. I think we know after the attitudes we saw at the media and how many people still put Gonzaga number one, which were they're all getting a pass because of these two guys that really screwed us up. But there's still tons of people that put Gonzaga number one, even though we have a better resume. So what's going to happen is if we lose this one, we could win out the rest of the SEC. Gonzaga's not losing again, and they're not moving because you can tell the media already has this attitude that Gonzaga passed whatever test they had for them in the end of conference, and they're not going to move no matter what we do in conference because their mind is set that they are the number one team, and the only reason they don't have better wins than us is because they don't play the same teams as us. So it's frustrating. You win here, though. But we, we jump them. We did play the same team, and you know they they played Alabama. We played Alabama, and those two games went uh, slightly differently. Yes. Anyway, so I, I, you got You got to win on Saturday to get that number one. If you want the number one, and we're gonna have to earn it. And there's a lot of things in life that way. The harder it is to get it, the more you actually feel. And that's something we kind of try to teach kids. And I think you learn as an adult that if you have to work hard for it, you, it means that much more for you. So I think this, you know, now that we didn't get that number one, if you're looking for the silver lining, like I said earlier. If we earn this one on Saturday, when we get that number one, there's no doubt. If we got number one this last time, it was kind of almost there was a certain amount of feeling wanting to get it out of the way in case we lose to Kentucky or some other team down the line. Right. You win this one. There, there's no hedging. The peacock feathers are coming up. <laughs> we are flying over through the air. We're it's good. The memes will be amazing. Uh, man, this is fun. We're having a good time. It's gonna stink if we lose, but uh, just again just pinch yourself and say we could lose to kentucky on saturday and be tied for the lead in the sec almost halfway i mean that there's <laughs> there's a lot worse places to be than that but man it will feel awesome if we can if we will have a lot of fun on this podcast saturday if we do kentucky. yeah we still haven't done a lost podcast uh still haven't lost in regulation uh it's a good time man matt or eagle or eagle everybody let's get kentucky on saturday